Good morning and welcome to worship at Berwyn United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Rodney Brailsford and it's a joy to worship with you on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. We continue with our sermon series entitled Transformed, Dealing with Your Feelings. And today we'll be talking about abandonment. Friends, being abandoned hurts. In the moment it can feel like you can't breathe and life is about to end. And then comes the painful sensations that ripple through the body and fill you with paralyzing panic. When this happens, you can become fearful of ever experiencing abandonment again. Today, we'll take a look at scripture to find the comfort and the knowledge that although you may feel abandoned, we are never alone. Friends, please join me in singing our opening song, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. Friends, our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. Here, Jesus, who is anticipating his death, promises the Holy Spirit to his disciples. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all creation, maker of the world and everything in it, you are never far from each one of us. 
We come into your house seeking you, O giver of life and breath. Reveal yourself to us, dwell with us, and abide in us. We live because you live. We hope because of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, in whom we live, and the spirit of truth who abides in us. Amen. I will never abandon you. At some point, we all want or need to hear those words. They speak directly to some of our greatest fears, abandonment, isolation, loneliness, and vulnerability. They remind us that we are not destined to walk this earth without identity or direction. We don't walk alone. Undoubtedly, seasons of life, moments, transitions, changes, and tragedies can leave us feeling as orphans. Whether spoken or unspoken, the question begins, what will I do now? Where do I go? What happens next? Who will love, nurture, and guide me? Who stands on my side? What will become of me? These are the orphan's questions. Those are the questions I imagine running through the heads and hearts of the disciples in today's gospel. It's the Last Supper. Disciples have been fed. Feet have been washed. The betrayer has left. It's night. And Jesus announces he is leaving. The one for whom they left everything now says he is leaving. We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Show us the Father. More orphan questions. What will we do? What will happen to us? The feeling of being an orphan is real. Certainly the orphan's questions are buried deep within the death and destruction that recently raged through Beirut, Lebanon. And I'm sure they must be asking questions. Are we left alone? Are we nothing but content for the evening news? How do we move forward and rebuild? Who will go with us? What's next for us? Anyone who has ever lost someone, uh, lost a loved one, a spouse, a child, a friend, security or hope knows the orphan's questions. We fear becoming orphaned, abandoned, that fear points to the deeper reality that by ourselves, we are not enough. It's not, however, because we are deficient. It is rather because we were never intended or created to be self-sufficient. We were never intended to stand alone as individuals. We were created to love and to be loved, to live in relationship as persons giving themselves to each other, to abide, to remain within each other, even as the Father is in Jesus and Jesus is in the Father the opposite of being orphaned, the opposite of being abandoned. I will not leave you orphaned. That is the promise. Regardless of the circumstances of our lives, we have never been and will never be abandoned by God. How strange that must have sounded to the disciples. In the same conversation, Jesus tells them that he is leaving and coming. Leaving and coming sound like opposites. But don't try to figure it out. It's not something to try to figure out. It's a call to see things differently and to live in a different way. How many times, for example, have you told your loved ones who may live far from you, even though we are apart, I will never leave you? Leaving and coming, presence and absence. These must be held in tension, not as mutually exclusive. That is what Jesus has set before us in today's gospel. That tension confronts us with the question of whether Jesus for us is a past memory or a present reality, a sentimental story that makes us feel good or a living experience that challenges us, guides, and nurtures our life. According to Jesus, the answer to that question is determined by love that is revealed and fulfilled in keeping his commandments the commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love our enemies, to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Whose feet do we wash and whose feet do we ignore? What are the boundaries of love? Do we keep the commandment? Is our love growing, expanding, transformative of ourselves and the world? If so, Jesus is probably a reality for us and we have experienced his promise that we are not left orphaned, we are not abandoned, we are not alone. 
If, however, we are not loving so much, if we build our fences taller and we isolate ourselves, then we consign ourselves and one another to the orphanages of this world. However, the promise of Jesus is still true. He remains faithful. We have simply not claimed that promise for ourselves. Keeping the commandment to love is our access to Jesus' promise that we will not be left orphaned. Keeping the commandments does not make Jesus present to us. It makes us present to the already ongoing reality of Jesus' presence. The commandments do not earn us Jesus' love. They reveal our love for him, a love that originates in his abiding love and presence within us. Every time we expand the boundaries of our love, we push back the orphanages of this world, creating space within us where the Father and Jesus make their home. I will not leave you orphaned. Regardless of what is happening in our lives, from day to day, that is the promise of Jesus. We have not been abandoned. Do not abandon yourselves or others to the orphanages of this world. Love with all that you are and all that you have, even as the Father and Jesus love us with all that they are and all that they have. Let us pray. Loving and nurturing God, we thank you that Christ died for our sins and rose again to give us new life. We cannot love as Christ loves in our own strength, but only as we submit to the work of your Holy Spirit only as we walk in spirit and in truth. May the love of Christ flow through us to others so that Christ's love is seen in us. Teach us to know and understand what it means to simply rest in you. May we abide in you. Guard us and reveal more of yourself to us. We thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us always. Make us willing vessels to be guided by your spirit. May the life that we now live in this body and the choices that we make as we journey through life come from our new nature as prompted by the Holy Spirit. To your praise and glory, growing in grace and in a knowledge of you, now and forever. And now we pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, Jesus draws us from the margins into a great feast. He draws us out of a crowd to healing. He draws us from death to new life. Each day God finds the way that we need to be loved and challenged, and then calls us to minister to others in warm hospitality, healing mercies, and the promise of resurrection and new life. We respond to this marvelous call through our giving this day. Friends, let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the Lord of heaven and earth. You sent Christ, your son, to fully reveal your abundant and deep love for all you have created. We long to be more like Jesus who kept your commandments in every respect. Let our thoughts and deeds be directed by your spirit of truth who lives in our hearts. We ask that you use these gifts and offerings to advance our church's ministries so that our neighbors will experience your loving care. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Listen to the promise Jesus makes. I will never abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Even though the world will not be able to see me, I will never vanish from your sight. And since I live, you will also live. Go from here in the knowledge that you do not go alone. The power and presence of God goes with you. Wherever we are, we are in God. Wherever we are, we are in Christ, and Christ is in us. Wherever we are, the Spirit abides with us and in us. We go forth in peace and hope, upheld by God in every way. May all see God in us and through us. Amen. Go in peace.